the Northern Irish Football League, or the NIFL, is the league that represents Northern Ireland, and is commonly referred to as the Irish League and not the League of Ireland, because the IFA predates the FAI, and why the IFA is not called the NIFA. The IFA was set up during British rule in the Protestant capital of Ireland, Belfast. Dublin was a hotbed for nationalist sentiment until the GAA ruled the roost there. But after the Irish War of Independence, the Republic found themselves in need of an FA, and they couldn't just call it the IFA since that existed up north. So the FAI was created instead, and this led to an interesting, albeit problematic, situation wherein both associations claimed to represent the whole island of Ireland until FIFA stepped in to sort matters out. With that little history lesson over, it's time for another one. The NIFL was formed in 1890, a week earlier than the Scottish Football League. This makes the NIFL the second oldest league in the world, with only the EFL being older. However, the NIFL in its current format has only been operational since 2013. Despite the league representing the whole island of Ireland, seven of the eight teams when it was formed were from Belfast. Clarence, Old Pack and Ulster no longer exist, and Milford, based on Armagh, were the only team not from Belfast in the league. However, four teams are still around. Linfield, Cliftonville, Glentoran and Distillery, who have since moved out of Belfast and are currently playing in Lisburn, are still alive in the league today, although some are more alive than others. The years before World War I would see many sides join and leave in the meantime, including LOI sites such as Bohemians and Shelburne. Following the War of Independence, the league was dominated by Belfast teams. It took until 1952 for Glenavon of County Armagh to win the Irish League. Glenavon were also the first team to represent the league in Europe. In the 1957-58 European Cup, they were beaten 3-0 by Danish side Aarhus, despite earning a nil-all draw away from home in the first leg. An estimated 33,000 people were in Windsor Park for that game, indicating that this, much like it was for the League of Ireland, was the golden age for the NIFL. An NIFL side wouldn't win a match in Europe until 1959-60 season, when Linfield beat Swedish side IFK Gothenburg 2-1 at Windsor Park, only to be smashed 6-1 in the return leg. Finally, in the 1965-66 European Cup, Derry City were the first team to win over two legs, as they beat Norwegian side Lynn 8-6 on aggregate. Despite trailing 5-3 after the first leg, Derry crushed the Norwegians 5-1 away from home. But problems could be noticed at the game at the Brandywell. Not just the troubles, the biggest problem was the attendance. Whereas 33,000 people had seen Glenavon beaten 3-0 by Aarhus a decade earlier, only 7,000 people saw Derry play Lynn. Much like down south, the average man could now watch the likes of Celtic and Manchester United winning the European Cup and preferred to do so. Derry were beaten 9-0 by Anderlecht in the next round anyway, so it didn't matter. Derry would be out of the league by 1972 as the troubles forced them to withdraw. They joined the League of Ireland in 1987 and remain there to this day. The troubles were of course a huge part of the history of the league. One club, Belfast Celtic, withdrew from the league due to safety concerns when during a match against Linfield, a mob attacked the team and broke the leg of Protestant striker Jimmy Jones who was then kicked unconscious. I could list more and more incidents and talk more and more about the history of the league, but I think you get it by now. Northern Irish football has been tainted by those sectarian years. And while it is a mostly Protestant league, strongly Catholic teams such as Glentoran and Glenavon are here, and particularly the rivalry between Glentoran and Linfield can get pretty nasty. Let's talk about what the league does wrong, first of all. As I have mentioned, there are way too many teams in this league, although to be fair, the IFA have tried to implement minimum standards for entry to the Premiership, and local councils seem keen on helping clubs reach that standard, although it's a fairly low bar. Look at Warren Point Town's home ground. But a problem this creates is something which the IFA can't control. Let's make something very clear. The IFA is doing a better job right now than the FAI when it comes to pretty much everything, including a domestic league. The current league format works very well, but it has a very low ceiling. You see, there are 36 teams in the Irish League system only counting the top three from the Premiership to the Intermediate League. But unlike the League of Ireland, uh, teams from lower down can come through the lower regional leagues. So the reality is that far more teams are in the system. The problem this creates, which I've been building up to, is money. Northern Ireland has a smaller population, lower interest in the domestic league, yet it has nearly twice as many teams as the Republic. This means that money is often scarce. For instance, the prize money for winning the Danske Bank Premiership is just £22,000. That's nearly five times less than the insulting amount offered by the FAI to the League of Ireland champions. Worse worse than this, this is down from £50,000 won by the Danske Bank champions in 2012. But unlike the FAI, this is not down to negligence or that scumbag John Delaney, it's down to distribution. The Irish League clubs themselves have voted for this system, as they see it as a preferable alternative to letting one club run away with the league every year. While I see where the clubs are coming from with this, there are massive problems this creates. Clubs are unable to sustain success off this model, as the money they get doesn't allow them to attract better players to their teams. Over the past decade, 18 teams have played in the Premiership, and consistency is something that hasn't been seen outside Linfield and Crusaders. Even a club as big as Portadown isn't safe. Despite playing in the Europa League as recently as the 2011-2012 season, Portadown were relegated after the 2016-17 season and haven't been back up to the Premiership since. The lack of consistency seriously hurts the league as it's harder for teams to build momentum and create a following. This can be seen in the attendance figures. 
2016 and 17, while the bad season for Porter Down was an amazing season for the league, because it was the first time in ages that the league broke an average attendance of 1,000 fans per game. The standard is poor too, but in my opinion that's partly down to the refereeing. The tendency to let the play flow is one I can stand by, but the NFL lets it go a bit too far as it doesn't prepare teams very well for Europe, where they are routinely torn apart by much better opposition. It's why an Irish league team has never made it to the group stages of a European competition. But quality alone can't explain such low attendances. No, the other half is facilities. Better stadiums attract better crowds. Linfield have Windsor Park, the best stadium in the league by far, and it attracts the biggest crowds. Clubs like Warren Point Town and Carrick Rangers have the lowest attendances in the league, and well, I'm noticing a trend, shall we say. This season, the two clubs have the lowest attendances in the league, not counting Institute FC, who are by far the second most popular team in Derry. Carrick Rangers have 605 fans per game, and Warren Point have by the lowest, including the Institute FC, an average of 256 fans per game. 256. I'm sorry to keep beating up on Warren Point, but this ground is fucking terrible for Premiership standards. Carrick's ground is much better, but at least there's room to develop the stadium. Milltown is like a worse Oriole Park, and that's saying something. It's not encouraging for the Irish League. There's too many teams and not enough resources. The standard is poor, and the success is hard to sustain. There are an amount of Sunday League grounds everywhere, and it's starting to hurt the association big time. They have dropped to 52nd on UEFA's coefficient rankings, a full 15 spots behind the League of Ireland and below Gibraltar. But I still find myself with much more positive things to say about the league than negative. While some stadiums are crap, some stadiums are absolutely fantastic. Larne, Portadown, Cliftonville, Glenavon, Coleraine, Crusaders and of course Linfield all have fantastic stadiums that would make for excellent away days. L local government is willing to invest in facilities for their teams too, as has been evidenced, but they're not the only one. Investment is coming to the Irish League and the IFA is not this, pro in the pro this problem because of inaction. They have tried hard to listen to clubs and create a successful system, and it must have worked at least some bit. Linfield have made tremendous progress in a short space of time, coming very close to the Europa League qualification last year. Crosstown rivals Glen Torren have been taken over by Iranian Welsh businessman Ali Poor, who immediately pumped £1 million into the club. Larne have been taken over by Kenny Bruce, who seemed to the construction of a new stadium where Larne now play. Things are looking up for the NFL, and even teams with subpar facilities often have room to expand. I personally don't feel any hatred towards the North and I'm sure that while the banter between fans might cross the line, the LOI would be happy to merge with this league. They are headed in the right direction and doing the right things, but they could be doing so much more. But the IFA has been reluctant to accept talks with Kieran Lucid. They initially refused to allow teams to partake in talks with the All-Ireland League. Ballymena United and Cliftonville followed suit, saying that they didn't want to be involved, with the latter criticising the idea as a pipe dream. It seemed like a Protestant Catholic divide once again, but then something unexpected happened. Crusaders, one of Belfast's most prominent pro Protestant teams, said they would continue talks. It was a shot in the arm for the project. Crusaders were not in full support, but they believed that the opportunity was too good to turn down. That's just it though. Glen Torren have been strong advocates too, and Larne FC have shown interest in the plans. It would be a huge change for the way football operates in the North. The very idea of unifying with the Republic might be an awful thought for some, but when football is involved, this idea could propel clubs all across the region to new heights. It won't be easy. No one is promising it to be easy. There will be strong changes and hard times, but there will be great times, greater than anything that could be achieved by themselves alone. I've been around with a plan, and this is the second part of my six-part series, The League's Divided. Stay tuned next week, where we look at the League of Ireland in part three.